The best way to find great stocks before everyone else is to understand a company's products, not just their profits. Huge growth happens when there's a new or quickly growing market and an existing company already has the perfect product for it. Nvidia is making millionaires as their GPUs keep dominating AI processing in data centers, not just gaming. And Palantir is making people rich as their AI software platforms gain new ground in commercial industries, not just with governments. And in this episode, I'll highlight three stocks that are dominating different markets that are all growing fast thanks to AI. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to waste your time. Here's everything I'm going to talk about in this episode. Supermicro Computer, which is a great data center technology company that works with almost every major chip maker and cloud service provider. AMD and their MI300X platform, which is the only real competitor to Nvidia's GPUs and Netflix, which could be one of the biggest beneficiaries of generative AI for video, because they already use AI in some very sneaky ways, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And speaking of AI, Nvidia's GTC goes from March 18th to the 21st, and I'll be in Silicon Valley to cover it live. GTC is Nvidia's massive developer conference, where they showcase the latest AI breakthroughs in every major market, from video games and visual effects, to robotics and self-driving cars, the same science behind the stocks that I talk about on this channel. And this year's GTC focuses on how generative AI is taking every industry by storm. So comment below with what you want me to cover while I'm sneaking around, like asking questions at Jensen's keynote, or trying to get my hands on Nvidia's newest products and prototypes. And there will be tons of exclusive and completely free online sessions with speakers like the COO of OpenAI, the VP of Research at Microsoft, and even Kathy Wood from ARK Invest. Uh-oh. But whether you attend GTC in person or online, I want to make sure I'm giving you as much value as possible. So anyone who registers for at least one session using my link below can win an NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super Graphics card worth up to $1,300. This thing is heavy. And if you do want to come to GTC in person, my link comes with a 20% discount for your pass. Either way, all you have to do is attend at least one session in person or online, take a screenshot, and send it to me after the conference by going to tickersymbolu.com slash GTC. I'll post all of the links below for your convenience, and I'll announce the winner a few days after the conference to give everyone some time to enter. All right, let's dive right into Super Microcomputer, ticker symbol SMCI which was founded in Silicon Valley in 1993, the same year as Nvidia. Supermicro designs, integrates, optimizes, and delivers everything from full-scale server and storage systems down to individual workstations for a wide variety of verticals, from cloud services and AI training to 5G and edge computing. Almost all of their products are ready to go out of the box. The customer can just plug in their data and their power cables, and they're ready to go. But instead of competing with companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Intel, SMCI partners with them and turns their chips into custom computing solutions, adding the right power electronics, high-speed networking solutions, cooling, and even the right firmware and software as needed. In my opinion, Supermicro has two big competitive advantages over other original design manufacturers. The first is that they're headquartered in Silicon Valley, not Taiwan or China. Here's why that matters. Let's say that Nvidia designs a new GPU, like their upcoming Blackwell B100 accelerators. Nvidia can share those B100 designs with Supermicro, so that they can lay out and optimize the boards, the connectors, the cooling, and whatever other components they need to keep the B100 at peak performance when it's installed in an actual server rack. And since they're right down the street, updates and changes to the B100's design are easy to manage. And on the flip side, Supermicro is only about 15 miles from Google's headquarters as well. So they can make sure that Nvidia's chips or Intel's or AMD's are optimized for the actual data centers that they'll end up going into and that they're ready to go as soon as possible. That speed is everything. Every part of Supermicro computer is set up to minimize time to market which means that Supermicro's customers can start earning returns on their infrastructure investments even faster, especially if they're getting the best chips up and running before their competitors. And that's where Supermicro's other big competitive advantage comes in. Their server solutions are all completely modular. Supermicro calls these modules server building blocks. Some customers might need more storage, while others might want more memory. Some data centers might want more CPUs, while others want as many GPUs as they can get. Supermicro also has more universal server building blocks for power, 
cooling, and networking that can each be optimized for different markets or specific kinds of workloads. This building block architecture is what lets SMCI very quickly build solutions for so many different kinds of verticals. When a company like NVIDIA launches a new chip, Supermicro doesn't need to design a whole new server system for it. They just design a new building block, and that building block can connect to the rest of SMCI's ecosystem. Supermicro is actually giving a talk on exactly this topic at NVIDIA GTC. So if you're looking for a great session to attend online or in person, or you just want to win the sweet 4080 Super GPU, check out Supermicro's talk on deploying some of the world's largest AI compute clusters for large language models. SMCI stock is already up by around 40% since I covered it just a few weeks ago, because it got added to the S&P 500. Like I said at the start of this video, the best way to find great stocks before the rest of the market is to understand a company's products, not just their profits. And of course, the global artificial intelligence market is the hottest market on the planet right now. It's expected to more than 15x in size over the next 10 years, which amounts to a staggering 37% compound annual growth rate, and Supermicro's earnings should grow along with it. And while this AI boom is going great for Supermicro, it's also going great for AMD, which is up 52% year to date and over 25% since my latest video on it. Huh, not too shabby. The main complaint I always hear about AMD stock is its price to earnings ratio, which is currently around 400. But price to earnings is easily the worst metric to judge any high growth company by, and it's the single biggest reason many so-called value investors miss major moves in the market and then complain about valuations from the sidelines. In my opinion, a much better metric for AMD is its forward price to sales ratio, which is currently around 13. That's not cheap, but it's well below Nvidia stock, which has a forward price to sales ratio of 19.3, or Arm Holdings, which is currently trading at a whopping 37.5. And I honestly think that AMD's sales will outperform expectations over the next few quarters for two key reasons. First, they're coming out with competitive products on a price to performance basis. AMD's MI300X is designed to compete directly with Nvidia's H100s in both a single and eight GPU configuration. Including software optimizations, AMD's GPUs appear to perform around 30% faster on at least some inference workloads for large language models such as Prompting Llama 2. And while Nvidia's H200 GPUs come out in a couple months, followed by their next generation B100 Blackwell chips, we all know that Nvidia currently has way more demand than supply, at least for now. Meta platforms alone ordered 350,000 NVIDIA H100s for their future AI projects, including developing artificial general intelligence that could learn to perform a wide variety of tasks. Uh-oh. As cloud service providers and supercomputing clusters keep placing massive orders for NVIDIA's GPUs, the wait times are still around three to four months and could be longer for their newer chips. Guess who companies are going to buy from if they don't want to pay those prices or wait that long? AMD is the only other data center GPU designer in town, which means I can own the entire data center GPU market with just two stocks, Nvidia and AMD. That way I win no matter what, and I get rich without getting lucky. The data center GPU market is expected to almost 7x in size over the next nine years, which is a compound annual growth rate of 24%. And we haven't even talked about AMD's server CPUs. AMD's current fourth generation Epic server processors have up to a whopping 128 CPU cores on a single chip. AMD has more than doubled their server CPU market share since they released these fourth generation Epic processors back in 2022. But photos of prototypes for their fifth generation processors, which are codenamed Turin, have been popping up online, and they're coming with some pretty serious upgrades like having up to 192 cores on them, and each core having access to roughly twice as much shared memory as their current chips. Increasing the number of cores and the amount of memory that each core can share are two tricks that AMD has been using to consistently take market share away from Intel since 2017, and these Turin chips should take it to a whole nother level. AMD is expecting to average over $2 billion in quarterly data center revenue in 2024, and I honestly think that could be conservative. Their data center revenue last quarter already came in at $2.3 billion, which was up 37% year over year and a whopping 43% quarter over quarter. 
And while it's true that AMD expects sales from their client, embedded, and gaming segments to all decline sequentially, I think that's because they're starting to transition their overall focus to powering AI in data centers, just like we saw Nvidia do back in 2022. And we all know how that worked out. So if you want to learn more about how fast these AI markets can grow, as businesses everywhere start using NVIDIA's and AMD's platforms to power their generative AI efforts, you don't want to miss this talk at NVIDIA GTC on solving the generative AI infrastructure challenge in 2024. That's a great way to learn more about the science behind these stocks. Speaking of which, the third stock on our list is Netflix, which has quietly doubled over the last year. I've been thinking a lot about streaming services in the era of generative AI, and I believe that Netflix could be one of its biggest beneficiaries. Let me explain why. First, Netflix has AI baked into everything they already do, like how they calculate the similarity between any two pieces of content to show you movies and shows closest to the things they already know you like. That's called content filtering, and it's why Netflix has those famously specific content categories, like gory foreign satanic stories, or visually striking nostalgic dramas, or my personal favorite, understated romantic road trip movies. Eh, don't judge me. Another way Netflix uses AI is to group users together based on their viewing history, preferences, and patterns of behavior. When enough people in the same group of users like a new piece of content, Netflix will recommend it to everyone else in that group, since they should have similar tastes. Likewise, if enough similar members don't like a piece of content, Netflix won't promote it to the rest of that group. This is called collaborative filtering, and getting this right is how Netflix keeps improving watch times. All right, now let's get into the sneaky stuff. Did you know that Netflix uses computer vision to find the most visually appealing scenes in every video and automatically turn them into thumbnails? Netflix's AI system automatically makes up to a dozen or more thumbnails for each video and the one that you see is the one they think you're most likely to click. That's why you and your friends or family can have such different looking Netflix feeds even though you might be watching some of the same content. Netflix also uses machine learning to help identify groups of users who might be underserved by their existing content as well as gaps in their overall content catalog. Netflix also uses that data to help identify what kinds of original content to create and what they think will perform well. And this isn't some little gimmick. Netflix has produced over 1,900 originals so far, and they've earned over 30 Emmy nominations and over 20 wins this year alone. Now, here's where generative AI comes into the picture. Just a few weeks ago, OpenAI released a text-to-video model called Sora, which can generate videos up to 60 seconds long, including highly detailed environments, complex camera motion, and multiple lifelike characters. Just take a look at some of these stunning scenes, all of which are totally AI generated. I think that studios of all sizes will use tools like Sora to create content faster and cheaper than ever before, content that Netflix would be willing to acquire. Netflix is also number one when it comes to offering content in different languages, whether that means subtitles or full-on voiceovers. Well, AI is perfect for expanding the number of languages that existing movies can support. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. And I don't blame you. And now we're stuck on this stupid, stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. And it's all my fault. Finally, I can watch all my favorite understated romantic road trip movies in Japanese. All kidding aside, more languages means content creators and studios can reach a larger audience, which means they can take more creative risks on content instead of just sticking to sequels. That's a win for everyone. But let's take it to the next level. About five years ago, Netflix released an interactive episode of Black Mirror called Bandersnatch. It was a choose-your-own-adventure where your decisions during the episode changed what you saw next, and there were even multiple endings. Well, what if a streaming service used something like LTX Studio, which can generate an entire storyboard for a movie from a single prompt? It uses pattern recognition to link scenes together, and then a human can go in and make edits to anything in a scene from something small in the background, to the lighting, all the way to the main character themselves. And once a character is generated, they stay consistent through the entire movie. I wouldn't be surprised to see all of these technologies eventually make their way onto Netflix. 
where instead of just personalizing thumbnails and recommendations, the content itself could be personalized to the user. Are you somebody who likes more action and adventure scenes? Throw a few more in there. Are you somebody who likes more dialogue and world building? Pepper in a few extra scenes up front. Are you somebody who only watches movies if they're 90 minutes or shorter? Here's a version without any extra fluff. Netflix already produces way more original content than any of its competitors. Not to mention they have more subscribers than their next two biggest streaming competitors combined. They reported over 260 million members at the end of 2023. So if you want to learn more about how Netflix bakes AI into so many parts of their business, check out their session at GTC on streamed video processing for cloud scale vision AI services. During that session, a computer vision systems engineer from Netflix and an AI engineer from Nvidia are going to show off prototype video processing technologies for the next generation of streaming. I'll leave my registration link for GTC, links to all of the sessions that I mentioned in this video, and the link to enter to win the Nvidia RTX 4080 Super Graphics card in the description below. Trust me, you don't want to miss GTC this year. And if you're attending in person, I'll see you there. But if not, make sure to comment below with what you want me to cover so I can provide you with as much value as possible while I'm there. All right, I know this video was a little long, but I wanted to be thorough since generative AI is creating so many huge opportunities for investors in a wide variety of industries, from data center infrastructure to AI processors and accelerators, and even the cloud services that are being built on top of them, all of which I touched on in this video. And in my opinion, the way to find the winners in these quickly growing markets is to understand the science behind the stocks. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching. And until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.